final chapter of his 1943 magnum opus, Being in Nothingness. Jean-Paul Sartre dedicates over 10 pages to analyse the phenomenon of what he calls the viscous, or the slimy. For Sartre, the figure of the slimy is interesting because of its quality of being something semi-liquid and semi-solid, what Sartre calls a substance between two states. In his account of our conscious perception of things in being a nothingness, Sartre speaks of water as the symbol of consciousness. Because consciousness is active and free-flowing, it can shift and adapt itself to grasp the shapes and structures of the things it perceives. As opposed to this conception of consciousness to be water-like, Sartre says that the intentional objects or things that are grasped by consciousness are represented by pure solid, as these things have a static quality which captures the attention or indeed fixation of consciousness. As a semi-liquid, semi-solid substance between two states, the slimy thus represents for Sartre phenomena which reverse the usual dynamics of our perception of things. Whereas for Sartre, it is normally consciousness that actively apprehends things, just as water actively flows and grasps the outline of solid objects. The slimy represents experiences in which it is no longer consciousness that is actively grasping phenomena, but what Sartre calls a curious reversal whereby consciousness is absorbed and passively controlled by the phenomena which it seeks to grasp and apprehend. this article, I suggest that Sartre's phenomenological account of the slimy finds a close parallel in the contemporary French philosopher Jean-Luc Marion's more recent notion of the saturated phenomenon, which Marion regards as paradigmatic of how phenomena give themselves to conscious perception. For Marion, saturated phenomena are marked by their excessive phenomenality, which overwhelms the intentional or conceptual capacities of consciousness thereby reversing or inverting the structures of a normal conscious experience into a mode of consciousness which he calls counter-intentionality. By reading Sartre and Marion's phenomenologies alongside each other, my article not only offers a critical perspective on the developments in recent phenomenology's understanding of the structures of consciousness, as well as contemporary French phenomenology's complicated relation with religion and theology, it moreover highlights how Sartre's analysis of the slimy can help us assess how phenomenology can facilitate our understanding of the agency of non-human entities and the effects they have on the way we apprehend.